Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. I've been off a few days and I've been doing a lot of bidding and designing and things like that. Not a whole lot on our, our social media pages this week, but I've been using this program called uh, Real-Time Landscaping Architect. It's what I design all my decks in. So I wanted to share with you five ways to use this software and just some quick tips. We'll probably turn this into a series because I, I know that this is going to be for more for beginners but I can get into really complex designs and things like that. But right now, I think I just wanna give you the introduction to this software, which I think a lot of you will appreciate. It's only $400, so it's not really expensive, but you can really exploit this software and make some really cool designs with it. You can also add really cool landscaping, pavers, and all kinds of other stuff. I'm not gonna get into any of that tonight. Just really trying to help you guys out, the ones that maybe you're looking for some design software. I get this asked so many times. So hey, uh, before I get too deep into this, please click that subscribe button if you find this video helpful or if you know somebody that could use this information and hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Okay, so basically what you see here is my screen. I have opened up the real-time landscaping architect. I'm using the 2020 version. I don't know if there's a update yet for 2021. Um, usually they don't come out maybe in the first quarter of the year and I always upgrade because I always like to find the little extra nuances I think it's a couple hundred bucks for an upgrade or I think it's 400 399 or something like that to get uh, the original software so I'm gonna go ahead and open up a file that I've already done and we'll dissect it a little bit here's the first tip as you start designing decks there's a grid on this screen but I usually set my grid up a little bit differently. So I have I have five templates. I, I label all my folders. I have I started using um, Real Time Landscaping Architect probably in around 2012. So I've I've been using it for nine years. So every year I create a new file folder that's Real Time Landscaping Architect. These are the actual RLA files. If you sent this to somebody that did not have RLA software, it's not you're not going to be able to open it. You have to open up through the program. So these files are really good for your own personal. So as you see here, and you look at the screen, as I scroll around, you'll be able to see all these different deck designs that I've done, okay? So I'm gonna open up a, some software that, or a deck that I've designed. 20, I'm gonna go back into 2020. I also design all my decks with permits and things like that. This one has some measurements in it, so I'm gonna open up this one. If you're familiar with our channel, uh, you'll probably re recognize this deck. Now, what's cool about Real-Time uh, Landscaping Architect, you have a plan view, you have a perspective view. So I didn't get fancy with the house. I think I have another file that has a cover and the windows and all that stuff. You can add all that stuff. But what's cool about this software is you can like, draw benches, put in lighting, skirting, draw circles, draw squares, all kinds of different obtuse angles. Usually when I start a design, okay, here's, here's another tip. If you have a good enough computer, you can open up multiple programs at the same time and then you can bounce back and forth between the programs. That's gonna, I consider that a really important tip because I do that all the time. Let's open up another, hopefully my computer doesn't crash. We had a, a little bit of a crash issue earlier, so hoping that that doesn't happen. I hope I'm not taxing this baby out. I have a pretty good laptop. It's a 17 inch um, MSI. It's a Steel Series. Um, I don't know the model number. It's a gaming laptop, basically. And um, I like gaming laptops because they have really great graphics cards in them. I'm not really a gamer, but they, they seem to do me fairly well. Um, you can you can add uh, more cooling for the fan, but for the video, we didn't want to do that. So um, that's another tip for you is invest in a decent computer because when you start doing 3D renderings, which um, I don't know if I'll get into tonight, you'll see what I'm talking about. So there's our second program open. So I can flip back and forth between these. Here's the deck design. So uh, another tip for this software, let's say I'm, okay, so you see the circle? That is a accent strip. And the accent strip, let's say we just delete it. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't wanna delete that. What do I do? There's a back button, there's an undo button. So if you're in the middle of the design and you accidentally just delete the entire deck, which I've done several times, just hit the undo button. Boom, there it is. Hit it again. There's your surface border. So while we're talking about surface borders, the first thing I always do, this is like tip number four, 
I always start with the house. Start designing by, de by drawing your house. So I'll go up to building. There's house. There's tons and tons of options for your house. There's also a plan view and a perspective view. What do you want to see? It's asking you what type of roof materials, what type of wall materials do you want to see? Um, you can do standard white roof. You can do gradient. I've done that before. Gradient's kind of cool. And that's what we'll go with on this. Um, I also use the magnet over here. It's like a locker. So as I roll in on this, you can see it's locking up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open one of my deck templates because it's going to change the grid. Okay. Now you'll see on my on number five, I have a sample house. I have a bunch of curved stuff, circles, things like that. And these are just standard parts that I use. So you want to make yourself deck templates. There's tip number five that you can open up and get into the software. There's so many things that we can talk about, but I want to keep these videos in moderation, like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And then we'll get into another one in the future when we are like this week where we're not doing a lot of construction. Um, and I can get into some designs with you guys. So this is just stuff that I could steal if I needed to. You know, I can grab onto this. This might be a certain size. You can see I've got a 19 foot mark, which could be, well, no, that's not it. I'm not sure why this is up here, but it's all adjustable and changeable. I'm gonna open up another version of the landscaping architect just so I can show you the difference in the grid. Okay, so there's the grid originally as it defaults and there's my grid, okay? And you can change, you can actually change, and here's why. Uh, you can actually change per foot, per inch. It's all in your settings. So if you want to show the grid, you can do snaps, rulers, snap settings, terrain settings, environment settings. And, and there's a help section in the software, and there's also online tutorials. So you can always go in and find that stuff. Here's my empty grid. I'm going to zoom in. Let's just draw a house. We were just talking about this. I'm going to do a gradient roof in my plan view. Okay. And let's just do a simple house. Okay. My snaps are off. So I'm going to turn my grid on because now it's going to allow me to just kind of make it easier to design. So we're just going to do a 30 by 30 foot house. Okay. I usually never draw the house completely the way it's supposed to. I'm usually drawing, um, and you'll notice as I bring, okay, so see it says perpendicular. Now, as I get over to this other dot, it's going to give me an, okay, an indicator. So it kind of dragged me into that indicator that that's square. You can see the square icon in the right corner. So now I went in and took that. Okay. Then I click on the right mouse button and it allows me to complete the house. So it doesn't look like much in plan view, but when you go to perspective, there's our house. Okay. Now there's a few things that the program automatically does. It puts your roof at 35 degrees around where I live. It's more like a 22 to 23 degree roof. A lot of the homes where I'm from, we have to edit the roof type. So there's options. See the options at the bottom. You can edit, edit points, edit roof type. We're going to edit the roof type. Boom. You just click on the edge that you want to edit and there's there's your house. There's a real basic house. If you don't like the color, you can click on here and you have all these different colors to choose from. You also can show all material categories if you want, but instead of getting you confused, you can go with brick. See all the different brick. Color washes, I don't use that too much. I don't use hatch patterns too much. Rockeries. Now, just remember something. Even though this is inciting, you can use these textures for other items that you're making in your designs. There's also shake for shakes, uh, shake. So let's make the wall shake, okay? Let's make it a Cape Cod kind of gray. This, and usually what I find out is these, uh, sh the colors usually show up lighter in the program than they do on the screen when you're selecting them. So if I select wall 168, that's actually a little more true to what it is. If you don't want trim, you can remove the corner trim. You're still gonna have like your fascia of your roof. I think the default is one foot. Usually our roof overhangs where I am are two. 
So I'll make that two foot. You can be real as realistic or simplistic as you want. Okay. Okay, let's put a door. Um, you can choose. I usually do patio doors because I'm not usually I'm usually designing off the back of the house, and usually they're this. But I don't like the height of this. Um, it says the wall height's ten feet. And it very well could be. You can also add a foundation to the bottom by copying, pasting, removing the roof, and turning it into concrete. We're not going to get into that tonight. Um, oops. Undo. Undo. Okay. Redo. All right. So what I want to do, if I hit the control button, I've selected my, my door. If I hit the control button, I can move it up and down. Okay. Now it tells you over here the elevation. Uh, the symbol I don't like. So if I go into plan view, I can't stand it when this stuff pollutes my designs. So I'm going to change that symbol to just as like, I don't care what. Garage door, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Um, the width of this patio door, it says 6 foot 6. We're going to turn it to 6 foot wide. I'm going to go back into perspective view so you guys can see that. Okay, now let's drop a window. Again, I'm going to be really simpli simplistic tonight. Just get you guys started. I want to see... Um, where we go with this video and if this is something that we're going to continue on and turn you guys into some grandmaster designers or what. So most of the windows in the Pacific Northwest are kind of boring like this. Okay, so I can hit the shift button, excuse me, hit the control button and raise this up to about where this door is and then I can hit control C V, which is copy and paste and stick another window right there. All right, there we go. We've designed the house. Very simple. Usually it's going to take a lot longer than that to design your home. Okay. But now that I've got the windows where I want them and the doors where I want them, and sometimes I'll say, okay, I can see them. But um, in plan detail, you can go to a linear dimension and go, how far? Let's say we're uh, five feet off the wall. There's five feet. Oh, perfect. That's where it is. Great. Now I can delete that. All right. Let's draw a deck. Okay, here's my custom library of different types of decking. So just know, here's another tip. Save your deck styles. Label them. Put them in a, in a file like this. I've got, you know, tons. Most of them are AZAC, but I also have some TimberTech and a little bit of Trex, stuff like that. Usually one I go to a lot is, a, like, I have an AZAC coastline. And we're just going to draw a simple square. We're going to do a 16 by what are, 30. Boom. There's your deck. And then here's my last tip for tonight. Let's say you're happy with everything. You got to you got to toggle railing cuz what the what the, the software does is it puts your railing on all four sides. So I want to say toggle railing. I'm going to remove this rail. Okay? There you go. Now obviously we probably have some steps off of here somewhere. So, but for tonight we're not going to do it. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to change the elevation to come up to the bottom of my door. Okay, we'll add a little bit of skirting, which is down here. Boom, look at that. All right, and I get this question a lot. How do you make an accent strip? Okay, so you can see my accent strip is right here, but it's the wrong material. So I have to go in, I'm gonna show all the material categories. I'm gonna go to deck and fence. I'm gonna choose a dark color composite nine, but I'm gonna change the color, edit color and brightness. I can change the brightness of this and make it any color I want. Um, if you don't like the color, okay, you can do that. The width is 10 inches. Well, I want it 6 inches to represent just one deck border. I'm going to also switch sides, and you'll understand why in a minute. Well, maybe I won't do it, and then, you'll, and then I'll show you why I do, I, we do that. Okay, we still have our locker on. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I've been I've been left clicking. Now I'm going to right click that. There is our border. A couple problems. One, it's on the outside of the deck. If we switch sides, now it's on the inside of the deck. I think you probably noticed the decking grains going the wrong way. We got to change the angle of the decking direction to 90 degrees. Enter. Boom. Now you've got a proper border. If we look at it in perspective. Okay, my face is much darker than my border, so I got to go back to the deck, which you just click on the deck instead of the border. Go down to your fascia, edit color and brightness. Again, I just go 50 because I know that I like that color. It's close to 
dark hickory and coastline. So there's your dark hickory and coastline deck. There you go. Very simple. This is a really simple design. Let me show you something. This one's moderate. A little more detail. Okay. There you go. There's more than five tips on uh, using real-time landscaping architect. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned something off of this video, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Thanks for watching and have a great night.